is live, continuing team coverage of Hurricane Harvey from the News Center in Central Texas. I'm Matt Briscoe. Joining us now is Texas State Representative from House District 20, Representative uh, Colonel Terry Wilson. He's recently retired from the United States Army as a full colonel and uh, now serves the citizens of Texas in the House of Representatives. Representative Wilson, thanks for joining us tonight. Matt, thanks for having me tonight. Thank you. First off, what would you like to say to the folks out there who are weathering this storm tonight, this this really devastating night for the state of Texas? Yeah, Matt, uh, I'll tell you, first first and foremost, uh, uh, we're all on our knees for prayer. Uh, For God's grace uh, to you and Pete, as as we know that for those who uh, could be on the road or have already evacuated, um, you know, leaving your world and your worldly positions behind, but also for those who, who who have stayed in place or wasn't able to get out fast enough. Bottom line is, is uh, we just uh, we just pray for protection, and and then secondly, you know, for our first responders, you know, they they, they stay in place for the most part. Uh, they're they're you know they're they worked hard in preparation for. Uh, they're working hard now during this effort, and of course. Uh, I know that they're all uh, anxiously awaiting what the aftermath really appears to be in terms of their mission set going forth and doing their jobs in recovery. Absolutely. And Representative Wilson, just as we're talking here, I got a, we just had breaking news right before you came on here. And it, it happens to be out of San Antonio, out of the Weather Service office in San Antonio, where the eye of Hurricane Harvey can now be seen on a radar outside of uh, or out of San Antonio, the Austin San Antonio office. Um, I, I can't say it enough. I guess at this point in time, we're, we're just all on our knees in prayer, uh, thinking about these folks, especially down there in the Rockport, Port Aransas area. Um, Colonel, what do you think, as far as the response, what do you think of the state's response so far? Well, I'll tell you, you know, I, I, as, as uh, you and I had discussed earlier, uh, you know, uh, this is my first rodeo. It's the thing to Hurricane. Uh, I support it as, uh, as one of the key operations officers uh, in support of uh, Hurricane Katrina. And, and I will tell you, you now, you know, you, you had that point in time where there's a little, little bit of uh, anxiousness because it, it, it's really the uh, post storm. Uh, that uh, really is where when you're rolling your sleeves up and, and, and the real hard work gets gets into play. And so, you know, right now, you know that uh, folks are, are basically uh, very, very worried uh, about their property, their, their their relatives, their family, their friends. And, and you know, so you, the next day, you spend a lot of time uh, just basically executing those plans that are in place. And I'm going to tell you, I... You know, from my aspect of what I saw in our preparedness for Katrina and what I'm seeing here in Texas uh, with uh, the leadership of the Texas Department of Public Safety and the, specifically the Texas Division of Emergency Management, I, I'm very, very impressed with the coordinated efforts and the collaborated efforts at this point. Absolutely. And Governor Abbott was on the ball with this, wasn't he? I, I mean, he was I right guess, on the ball yeah. with it. I'd have to agree. You know, the thing about it is, is it's, it's really easy to be a good leader when you have uh, good leaders and agencies that uh, are professional, mm-hmm. that uh, are prepared for this time. You know, it's, it's no different, uh, you know, similar to, to what we do uh, in the Department of Defense. You know, we, we plan for every contingency. We, we put that plan on the shelf, and, and when it's time to... Uh, uh, unfortunately, you have to execute it. You know, you break the glass up with the book, and uh, you're already well rehearsed and you're executing. That's what I'm saying all the way from our state to our local uh, efforts. And the collaboration and the, and the coordination amongst them has been very, very impressive at this point. Absolutely. And, and just a few minutes ago, we had uh, Williamson County Sheriff Robert Chody uh, on our continuing yeah. coverage here. Great guy. And we were talking about these uh, PFDs that they have uh, these limited number of PFDs that they have there for their officers and their deputies. Uh, You know, Representative Wilson, what do you think uh, about the idea of the state maybe stepping in in places like this, especially along the coastal regions, to make sure that our first responders have this kind of equipment? 
Yeah, so, you know, that's one of the things that we learned, uh, especially when we were doing our after-action reviews, or what to learn post-Katrina, is one of the things that, uh, that's, that's true and obvious was at that time was the breakdown in communications. Frankly, there were too many communication systems out there. They weren't interoperable, uh, and, uh, and, it, and it just caused a lot of frustration uh, in terms of being able to reach out to connect uh, synchronized efforts and all those sorts of things. But in this regard, you know, I, I think one of the lessons learned will be is, is or that we should consider is are we uh, properly, uh, you know, uh, equipped uh, and, and resources, of course. And of course, on the resources side, I think that's the job of, of the state and legislature. But at the same time, you know, when you look at how much coastal uh, uh, land that we have, we're sure, uh, sure. it's it's one of those things where obviously in the Gulf of Mexico as, as vibrant and uh, that it can be with hurricane season and so forth, you know, as you know, as, as the time was coming with where we would see something as, as, as similar as this as category four. So, you know, I applaud Sheriff Cody. I talked to him earlier today and uh, I was just again one to you know, he truly demonstrated that the that the state and the local is very worried very well coordinated Absolutely. and I, I will tell you uh, one of my biggest concerns I, I think right now is, is basically the, the shelter situation yeah and uh, but uh, uh, but when I when I talked to Sheriff Cody and he walked me through in line and it's the same thing that I'm hearing from the state both communicating the same plan you know that the information is getting out there is being well thought through and, and they also clearly understand the risk and, and uh, in terms of, uh, of the need that may be there picking the situation. So, it's, uh, again, I'm very impressed with it all. Absolutely. And I know uh, part of your district includes Milam County, which, uh, which could see quite a bit of rain um, over the next few days. Uh, uh, what would you tell those folks out there, and what will be your, vers- or your response, your reaction, um, should they end up being in a catastrophic event out there? W- what is your role in that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first and foremost, they're a very resilient base. But they're, <laughs> but they're very hardcore, uh, passionate folks uh, for one another. Uh, they, they are a, a, uh, a real community that, uh, that uh, really have each other's back and they'll be helping each other. I talked to Sheriff Green earlier today. Uh, and uh, obviously, he is prepared to uh, initiate their emergency services. Uh, they've coordinated with Game Works, they've coordinated across uh, many agencies that are staying in touch with the uh, state uh, emergency center and so forth, like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I will say, you know, Mollick County uh, has been flooded in the locations. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been through this before. And uh, so, uh, again, uh, that's one of those things where I too will be into uh, uh, making sure or basically monitoring the uh, coordination. But I want to say I, I really have no concerns at this point in time. Uh, they, they have uh, they have demonstrated to me uh, they're at the state and local level that, uh, that uh, this, this has been well thought out and, and they're prepared to encounter whatever issues they may have. Again, the shelter state, you know, uh, We'll see over time how that uh, that rolls out as it may be able to extend funding often. We could probably see the shelter requirements probably as far as Williamson County if it really uh, gets bad day or prepared now. Absolutely. Well, Representative Wilson, I appreciate your help tonight in, in talking to the folks out there tonight across Texas and across the Hill Country and, and even around the nation tonight as the folks here in Texas experience what is just a looks like it's going to be an absolutely devastating event. Uh, I know, uh, especially earlier in the day when we were watching this, our hearts actually just, there was a point in time where I had to step back and say, you know, I'm not a journalist, I'm I'm a Texan, I'm a human being as I watch this devastation play out down around Rockport. um, Representative Wilson, I'll give you the final word on this. Go for it. No, thank you, Matt, and uh, thank you for covering that. You, you, you've done a great job, as, as well as the other youth agencies and so forth. And I, I will tell you that uh, that uh, our our hearts uh, are out for the folks uh, along the coast, and of course, in Houston, the the, the deadly flooding uh, that uh, potentially is there. Uh, the thing about it, 
uh, you know, uh, I know that uh, at, at times like this are hard, but uh, that's uh, one wonderful thing about Texas is we're, we're for each other and we'll come together and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll overcome and, uh, with God's grace. Absolutely. State Representative Terry Wilson, thanks for joining us. We're going to be here all night, literally all night, covering this. And uh, we appreciate your time here. And uh, thank you for your service and your leadership, what you're doing here for the people of the great state of Texas. Matt, thank you for uh, all, all the, the journalists and the, the reporters out there. You are putting their next job out there, uh, making sure that our people stay informed. Thank you for enabling that communication. Absolutely. It's our pleasure. Thank you for your leadership and thank you for your service. State Representative Terry Wilson, thanks for joining us. And again, that was State Representative Terry Wilson from House District 20. We also have a statement here from Senate District 24 Senator Dom Buckingham. She says, and I quote, and I'll read this verbatim to you. She says, as Hurricane Harvey bears down on the Texas coast, I'd like to update you on the very latest. By all expert accounts, this is going to be a bad storm, Senator Buckingham says. It may be our worst storm. According to the latest emergency update that she had received, no one, she says, can afford to take this hurricane or the subsequent flooding it will cause for granted. She goes on to say, I urge you to follow the latest news reports in your area and hope you will follow recommendations and advice from local and state emergency officials. You will not only be keeping yourself and your family safe, but our emergency first responders won't have to take unnecessary risks trying to save you. Most of all, Senator Buckingham says, I pray for your safety and that of your family. Together, we'll get through this weather event by being smart, by being prepared, and by taking precautions now. She closes by saying, may God bless you and your family, Senate District 24, and the great state of Texas. End the statement from State Senator Don Buckingham. As we continue our live ongoing coverage tonight of Hurricane Harvey, we pause as we exit to reflect on the damage, on the destruction, and everything that lies ahead for the great people of the state of Texas as we experience such devastation along the Texas coast. Reporting from the newsroom, I'm Matt Briscoe. Thank you for sent, uh, Representative Terry Wilson for joining us and the statement from Senator Don Buckingham. As we leave you, let's pause as we reflect on the tragedy and the devastation here in the state of Texas. We'll be back with more of our continuing coverage.